Hello and welcome back to another GCSE revision video. Now, one of the most common issues that are found at GCSE English students face when it comes to language paper two of the GCSE exams is how to effectively compare the two sources, okay, so source A and source B, in question number two, as well as question number four. Students sometimes think that comparison, for example, is writing about one source in one paragraph, then writing about another source in the same uh, essay, right, in a different paragraph, and then they say, oh, I've written about both sources, I'm comparing, which is not the case. Then they wonder, okay, where am I going wrong? How can I compare source A and source B, either talking about similarities or differences, you know, um, is uh, other uh, sources similar depending on the question? Other sources different depending on the question? Okay, thinking about question number two. But also when it comes to question number four, are the writer's viewpoints and perspectives similar in source A or source B? Or depending on the question, are the writer's viewpoints and perspectives different? How to do so? How to compare both sources effectively? So what I want to do is to offer you a really simple and very basic framework that you should use for any question two and question four response. And this framework actually had gone over with my GCSE masterclass just a Sunday gone, okay? We were looking at the November 2023 research exam and I showed them how they can use this uh, framework to answer literally any question two and any question four. And so going into their final exams, this is kind of a really, really powerful framework to adopt. So let's begin by going over the framework. Now you're going to see here that I've structured it into four separate sections, starting off with the point, evidence, explanation, link. This is basically just following a peel paragraph structure, okay? Peel paragraphs are my favorite forms of paragraphs. They're super easy, there's only four steps to remember, but also you can include things like writer's intent. You can also compare what the writers have to say, the viewpoints and perspectives, all of that within the same peel paragraph. But also, as you will see, when I'm going over this structure, you also need to ensure that you're writing about both sources in one paragraph. That's how you compare, not in two separate paragraphs, you do the comparison in the same paragraph. So, you begin your perfect comparison paragraph, either for question number two or number four of language paper two, by starting off with your point, look at the question. Is the question asking you to talk about a similarity or a difference between both sources and summarize it, for example, in question number two, or is the question asking you to talk about differences, okay? In your opening point, that's what you address, okay? And this is how you do it. So you begin your opening point talking about both sources in this way. Begin by mentioning source A first, okay? So always talk about the leading source first, then follow on by talking about is it similar or is it different, depending on the question, by linking it to what the writer has to say in source B. And of course, you mentioned keywords, so you're going back to the question, either question two or four, you mention the keywords that your examiner wants you to look for, okay? Now, before you dive into your, you know, before you dive into the quotations and stuff, remember that this opening point is you're simply just saying, this source is similar to source B or source A is different to source B. You don't add any quotations at this stage, however, you want to add useful keywords, okay? So in addition to the question, you want to use words that signpost to your teacher or examiner that I am talking about similarities or differences. This is how you do so. So if you're talking about similarities, you say, whilst source A shows blah, 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 similarly, source B shows blah, blah, blah. That's a perfect way to talk about similarities between source A and source B in your opening point. However, if you want to talk about differences, you could begin by stating, evidently, source A illustrates blah, blah, blah. Nonetheless, keyword to show you're sh looking for differences, source B illustrates blah, blah, blah. That's step number one when you're comparing uh, two sources, either for question two or number four. Now, of course, you then follow on with evidence. Don't put evidence in the first step. You put evidence in its own separate line, okay? So, of course, then to support whether they're similar or different, you then firstly quote from source A, okay? So, this is stated in source A when the writer states blah, blah, blah. And then you follow on with source B again, either saying similarly, likewise, or However, on the other hand, then you have your source B included, okay? That's step number two in your comparison paragraph. Then in step number three, this is where you go into your explanation. Now, the bulk of your marks uh, reside in this part of your peel paragraph because this is where you've got 
um, for question number two, you're showing your understanding of the, of, uh, the similarities or differences. You're summarizing, you're going to detail why are they similar or different. And of course, for question number four, the viewpoints and perspective question, this is where you're including things like methods, okay? So language, structure techniques that either uh, or both writers include, okay? So your explanation is super important. This is where the bulk of your marks reside. And this is how you explain why they're similar or why they're different. You explain Firstly, the quote that you've included in source A, okay? So always go back to source A. Say, okay, so in source A, this is how they're similar or this is how they're different. If you're answering question number four, you then add and layer in language or structure technique. Then when you're explaining what the quote in source A is showing, connect it to the key words, okay? Never lose sight of the question, say, okay, this is what the quotation is showing me, especially when I think about the question's keywords. Then link this to source B once more. You then go back to the question's keywords and then you say, okay, when I'm thinking about the keywords, similarities or differences, right of viewpoints and perspectives, this is what source B's quote shows me. And of course you then talk about, is it showing a similarity or a difference when you consider source A? Then the fourth and final step in writing your perfect comparison paragraph is simply finish off by linking back to the question. The link is actually fairly similar to the point. All you're doing is just wrapping it all up very nicely. And this is how you link, okay? So of course, uh, as I said, this is quite similar to your point. The only difference is that you are linking back to the question using words. So of course, again, use signposting words for your teacher and your examiner, okay? Say words like, hence, as a result, consequently, thus, therefore, then you say, you know, source A is evidently similar or different to source B. And literally, that's how you write a perfect comparison paragraph for question number two and number four of language paper two. So I hope this clears up any challenges you might be facing when you're writing comparatively and you're comparing two sources, okay? Thanks so much for listening.